Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at the Mole 3D Scanner by 3D Maker Pro. This handheld 3D scanner claims 0.05mm accuracy and a 0.1mm point cloud distance, which on paper puts it up against scanners more than twice its price. But how does the Mole 3D Scanner actually compare in real life? Let's find out. Before we begin, this Mole 3D Scanner was provided for me to review by SaneSmart, a leading retailer of CNC, 3D printing, scanning, and other maker-related tools and electronics. They aren't paying me for this review, and everything I say is my own honest opinion after using the Mole 3D Scanner for the last month. Let's get into it. The Mole 3D Scanner is a handheld 3D scanner, which uses near-infrared light to perform the scan. As you move the scanner around an object, or move the object on a turntable in front of the scanner, it builds a digital recreation of that object. The scanner itself is a capsule shape, with three lenses on the front, and a cable connector and tripod mount on the bottom. The shape is pretty ergonomic and feels good to hold. The lenses on the front consist of a near-infrared projector at the top, a visible light camera surrounded by an array of white LEDs in the center, and the near-infrared depth sensor at the bottom. They claim it has a 0.05mm accuracy and a 0.1mm resolution. The mole scanner comes calibrated from the factory, allowing it to recreate the real-world size of an object you scan. No need for an external calibration board, but I am curious if it loses calibration over time. It uses its own software, JM Studio, to perform the scan and post-processing. The software is pretty intuitive to use, and it has many tutorial prompts to help guide you through the process. It works for both Mac and Windows. The Mole 3D Scanner comes in three different combos. The standard combo is just the scanner and the power and USB cables. The premium combo adds in a tripod and handle, as well as a USB-powered turntable. And finally, the luxury combo adds in the color scanning kit. I have the premium combo with me today, which includes a very nice zipper carrying case which provides plenty of protection. Getting back to the scanner, there are two scanning modes with the Mole 3D Scanner. You can either use the Easy Scan mode, which is used when you want to move the scanner around an object, or Table Scan mode, in which the object sits on a turntable in front of the stationary scanner on a tripod. The main difference is that in Table Scan mode, you scan the empty turntable first so it knows where the turntable is. Then, after a scan completes, it'll pre-select the turntable points so you can easily delete it from the scan. You can get the same effect in Easy Scan with a few more mouse clicks, so it's not a major difference. Once you've determined the scanning method, you need to select between two scanning modes. Geometry mode uses the near-infrared sensor to detect features on the object you are scanning to detect how the object is moving in front of the scanner. Texture mode uses the middle camera to capture texture details, useful for colorful objects that may not have many geometric features. This is not a colored scanner, however, unless you get the top-end luxury combo with the color scanning kits. With just the mole scanner, you'll get a grayscale texture information while in texture mode. Finally, we can adjust the brightness and sensitivity until all the red disappears in the preview and start scanning. The Mole 3D Scanner scans at a smooth 10 frames per second in both geometry and texture modes. The scanning feels very smooth, and the scans update in real time, showing you the area that you are currently scanning as well as all the previously scanned points. And the software will also alert you if you move too fast, prompting you to return to the area that you've already scanned. The algorithm is great, it does an excellent job at picking up where it left off. I never felt like it just lost or gave up tracking, unless I was actively trying to stress the scanner with small parts or confusing movements. Once you've completed scanning a section of a part, you can go into the edit mode to refine the details. JM Studio has a number of tools for selecting and removing parts of the scan that you don't want, like the table your object is sitting on. You can even do boundary or plane selection to quickly select parts and remove them. You can then rotate your part to a different orientation and repeat the process until you've scanned every nook and cranny of your part. Oftentimes, two or three scans are all that's needed, but sometimes you might need more. Once you are finished, Jam Studio makes it easy to align all the scans. Automatic alignment worked for me most of the time, doing a pretty good job of getting the orientations correct. I did have to use the manual alignment mode a few times, but that was just as simple. Move the three markers to the same location in both scans, and I'll use that to align the pieces. The last step is post-processing. JM Studio will first fuse the scans into a single point cloud, and then run through the optional steps of noise reduction, repairing, simplifying, and texture mapping. I found that with most objects, the noise reduction and repairing did a great Great job at filling in any gaps of the model and making it watertight. Finally, it has tools to reorient the axes, and once you are ready, you can export the model as a .ply, .stl, or .obj, your standard 3D model file types. So let's talk about what the Mole 3D Scanner does right. 
In my experience, it was easy to configure and get my first scan. I am a technical guy, but it wasn't hard to install the software and the drivers installed automatically. As for the scanning itself, I was very impressed with the fluidity of the scan. As I mentioned before, the loss tracking algorithm helps a lot with that feeling as it'll pick up wherever it can the moment it sees a part of the object that it recognizes. This makes scanning more complicated parts pretty easy. I never found myself having to stop and restart a scan just because it lost tracking. I was very happy with this dragon scan. It is a very complicated shape, with the wings, tail, and neck often overlapping and including each other. The thin wings also give other scanners problems, but the Mole 3D scanner handled them just fine. This octopus is also a good example, with pretty good detail around the suckers on the tentacles. Don't judge the pre-scan data too harshly, as the post-processing often does an excellent job at working with point clouds that I didn't think aligned correctly. The final results turned out much better than the point cloud led me to believe. Now let's talk about scanning black objects. Normally, black is a hard color to scan with structured light, since it absorbs all visible frequencies. However, 3D Maker Pro claims that the near-infrared makes scanning black objects possible, and I found that this is true sometimes. With the brightness set to a level that works for most colors, the scanner does not pick up black, like the hair or the mouth of this Kerbal. Same with the black shoes of this Vault Boy. The scanner did not detect it. It is only when the brightness is cranked all the way up that it detects the black. Like it did with the handle of this hammer, it did a pretty good job with high brightness. The problem is that means you often have to do a scan twice with different brightness levels to get all the black parts. I would rather just use a coating spray for black colors. That workflow would be more efficient. And speaking of coating sprays, you still have to use them for reflective or transparent objects. This visor of Master Chief's helmet needed a coating spray before I could scan it. I found that dry shampoo works great. It leaves a smooth white coating that scans well and is easy to clean off. And the Mole 3D scanner worked well with this helmet, until I tried to scan the black and gray interiors. Again, we run into the issue with dark colors. But the exterior of the scan is great, and the texture mapping is pretty good. Finally, let's see whether Mole 3D scanner falls short. I could not get facial scans to work. It wouldn't even track for more than a couple of frames, regardless of the geometry or texture modes. My dark hair often throws off scans, but I was surprised that I couldn't get any scan to even start. I am also dubious of the 0.05mm accuracy claims. This resin 3D print has remarkable detail, but when scanned, the results were very underwhelming. All details of the shirt and the face are lost, and this isn't exactly a tiny object. 0.05mm accuracy with a 0.1mm line distance isn't enough to capture tiny details like the 3D print layer lines. I was also very surprised that the skull wasn't detected at all. I thought that all the holes would be a good challenge for the scanner, but it was barely detecting the solid face, let alone the holes in the side. It might be due to the slightly translucent material, that might be interfering with the near infrared. Finally, let me show you when the post-processing goes wrong. With the denoise and repairing, it has to make up details in order to close all the holes and make the scan watertight. I was very impressed with how this Veronoi Bulbasaur was turning out. The point cloud showed that it was capturing all the thin tubes with pretty good fidelity. However, it couldn't scan the surfaces on the inside. So when the noise and repair post-processing kicked in, it ended up connecting the entire inside. And without repairing, it just didn't know how to handle those missing surfaces. While most of the time the post-processing worked very well, when you give it a worst case scenario, it can sometimes stumble. Moving back to the hardware itself, the need for a power supply for the scanner makes it a little less convenient to use, since it tethers you to both your computer and a power outlet. 3D Maker Pro does sell an optional mobile scanning kit, which allows you to connect the Mole 3D scanner to your phone and do completely untethered scanning. Unfortunately, I don't have one here with me to test. So let's wrap up my thoughts on the Mole 3D scanner. As the sort of entry-level, medium-format scanner that it's designed to be, I think that the Mole 3D scanner does a great job. It handles even complicated geometries pretty well, and the software is easy to use. It does start to slip when confronted with smaller or more detailed objects, however. The fact that it comes calibrated from the factory and produces real-world scaled objects makes it useful for engineering purposes, where the size and scale is most important. On the other hand, if you are more of the artistic side, where the detail and color accuracy is more important, 
then other technologies might be better suited than the Mole 3D Scanner. The Mole 3D Scanner starts at $649 US for the standard package, with the premium and luxury packages costing $749 and $849 US respectively. The optional mobile scanning accessory is an additional $90 as well. This pricing does put it around the same price point as other similar 3D scanners. If you are looking for a scanner to get real-world sizing for occasional or casual scanning, the Mole 3D Scanner could fit that bill. So, thank you all for watching my review of the Mole 3D Scanner. What is your favorite aspect of the scanner, and what do you think is missing? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you are in the market for 3D scanners, why not check out my review of the RevoPoint POP2 scanner, or maybe my review of the Einscan SE turntable scanner. So, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.